Encounter today with Captain Cody Dunn. Hello, how are you doing? We're going to be looking and taking a look at spoons and talking about fishing with spoons. In particular, we're going to use our spoon of choice, Castmaster, introduced to me by Captain Cody. And I think we've introduced it to a lot of people as well. Lots. Just on the videos and talking to people out there on the rocks. So tell us about the spoon, Cody. What, what do you like about it? What is... What's one of the reasons why you, why you like this spoon? Well, I, I think the main reason why I like it so much is it was yesterday evening I went out to the beachfront and the green water was out 65 yards or something like that. And everybody argues, well, a shrimp is better and croaker is better and all that. But you're not going to throw a croaker or a shrimp 65 yards where the green water was at yesterday. So I was hitting it just barely two foot past where the green water started. I jig it a couple times and it was a trout almost every, I mean, it was a trout every cast for two hours. You know, a lot of them was non-keepers. I threw everything back. I didn't keep anything yesterday, but that's the main difference is if you're fishing birds, uh, a lot of times the birds, you know, get out of your range or you're throwing into the wind all of the time. And with a regular, you know, jig head and a, you know, a tail or whatever, you can't throw it to 25 yards in the wind. You get a backlash and you can't make it to the birds. This thing again, and to the wind, I mean, it, it, I can throw it 50 yards, I bet, you know, or 40 yards anyway. I mean, it throws so good, and it's, it's got all this flash, you know, and it just it looks like a bait fish, I think, running through the water, you know. And it's got vibration, and uh, every, most people just throw it out and reel it in. And I've been really playing with different retrieves on it, and I think that makes a big difference, too. Well, I know it makes a big difference, because a lot of, I mean, today, this morning we were fishing, and I was throwing it out, reeling it in, nothing. I throw it out, same spot, next cast and uh, I jig it and bam, I'd catch one. So when I, and then the next cast, I'd throw it straight out and reel it straight in, nothing, throw it back out and jig it in and i catch one. So, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot, of, and no, nobody really does that, I don't think, with these. So I've been really experimenting with it and it's, and it's working and I'm even throwing them in the bays. I'm catching black drum on them and I'm croaker and uh, I hadn't caught a sheep yet, I guess. No. But I've caught, I've caught everything on them. I mean, I take them offshore and I catch mahi-mahi on them and, our bait, blue runners, and I saw Eric caught a flounder on it last a 50 week. Fifty pound, a fifty pound cobia on this. Oh, know, okay. Catch blackfin tuna, and I mean, it's, it's limitless. It's flashy. It looks like a bait fish. Everything in the ocean needs bait fish. So, I guess. So, will you cast and just show me yeah. some of the techniques yeah, you so use? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, on the retrieve I was talking about just a while ago, I'm, I, it's almost like a top water. So I'm popping the rod a couple times. Great so, line. So yeah, it's just like a top water basically. You work it a couple of times for about a half a reel. And it takes a while to get the cadence, I guess you call it cadence, to get that down, the timing down of the jerk and the reel and the jerk and the reel. But I guess you get it down and it's kind of a slow retrieve really. It's coming in slow when you're doing all the jerking and reeling and stuff. And then you could you could fish so, different water columns with that. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's usually uh, upper water column. I mean, so I, I fish it literally. I mean, it looks kind of goofy, but I literally do that and I've caught some of my bigger trout doing it that fast. Set it. I mean it's just going crazy you know and you get, get a reaction. Style. At the top water column. Yeah it's the top water and I've had trout come out of the water on that you know so. Just chasing it. Cool deal. And then and then it's the typical jigging so I'll throw it out I'll count it down and that's another that's key too is when I throw it way out there not, most of the time I'll count it down about eight, eight seconds or so before I start jigging. If I want the mid water column or the lower water column, I'll count it down. And then you know you pop it up and let it fall down, pop it up, let it fall down, pop it up, let it fall down. I caught a bunch of the other day doing that because they got it seemed like to me they get tired of the, the fast jig, they got tired of the, the, the same retrieve straight in. So then I'd start popping it and bam, I'd start catching them again. So it's like they they've already seen that or they hit it, or I hooked them and missed them. So I, I tried to change that retrieve up quite a bit. So and you can pop it and just follow it down with your rod tip, pop it, follow it down with your rod tip, pop it, follow it up and down. But, and, it's al and it's almost always on the fall is when the trout will hit it. And uh, like I said, I, I catch So you have to keep your, when you're letting it fall, keep your hand on the handle and get ready to set the hook. Yeah. yeah so. What are you doing? You pop it up, get it down. But my best, the way I catch most of them, hey Roger, the way I catch most of them is this retrieve here. Just not I, I mean I can see it down there I'm staying just barely under the water doing that so probably just a fit under the water the whole way in and the closer you come in the higher it comes up it's climbing the water column the whole time when you 
you got your rod tip up like that and jerking, it's climbing your water column coming up. So that's the reason why I started off. I counted down eight seconds down to the bottom, and then it's climbing coming all the way back up to me. So sometimes in the mid, about halfway to me, if it's a long cast, I'll pause for a second, let it fall back down in the water column, and then bring it back up to me again, if that makes sense. That makes sense, yeah, yeah. totally. So, yeah, but, uh, and then also, I mean, on one the main, the main things that I recommend too is when you buy these, as we will take off the old split rings, these are like 50 pound split rings made by Spro, bought them at Sirius Tackle over at Texas City. And then this is a 3X hook that I bought. The hooks are kind of cheap on the Castmasters, hate to say that, love you guys, but the hooks bend out on these saltwater fish. And right. on a 50 pound cobia, you're not gonna get it on a stock hook. So we go back with 3X VMC hooks from Academy. Uh, they, they're pretty strong, they don't bend out like the other hooks do. Um, Sometimes I, I take the split ring out. I didn't have time to put a new split ring in this one this morning. I broke off quick, so I just just retied on it. Seems like it don't really seem like it makes an effect one way or the other. I'll, I don't use swivels. A lot of people say you got to use a swivel with the spoon. I I use I swivels. I don't. Use and we swivel. talked about that this yeah, morning. Yeah, right. Um, the other big spoons that a lot of people argue about, say the crocodile spoons. These outcast them. I mean, they're smaller. It's just as heavy, but smaller diameter. They don't catch the wind as much. So, yeah, the crocodile spoons are awesome. I've thrown them a bunch, but these will out throw them in the wind. You're always throwing in a south wind on the beachfront. And if you throw something much larger than that in profile, it's going to catch wind. It's not going to, you know, cast as far. So, but, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of my favorite lure right now. I'm catching a lot of fish on it. A lot of fish. Yeah, I mean, I, I caught it. We were fish on it yesterday. This probably. morning, this morning, those guys out there fishing with live bait and yeah, dead bait, we just, we kinda, and we outfished kinda, them kinda on the spoon. Them look foolish, really. I yeah, I don't. I didn't see them catch fish. I didn't see anybody catch I think fish we either. Twenty-five or thirty. Yep. Of course, they were using steel leaders from Walmart and all that stuff. Yeah. That doesn't mean you can't catch fish on steel leaders because I seen a guy catch a nine-pound trout the other day on a steel leader on a part of a croaker. So, but he only caught <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, he caught one, and I caught thirty. So. <laughs> So this is th something we didn't talk about a while ago, which I guess we probably uh, gonna be splicing or whatever. So anyway, um, our, our line tie here, like I said, I, I don't use swivels. I'm not a fan of a swivel. And so I use it, God, sorry, bud. Uh, FG knot, which is kind of frayed out a little bit, but that's an FG knot. It goes through your guides super good. I've got micro guides on this. Uh, a uni to uni knot won't go through all these micro guides. But uh, the FG knot is amazing. It holds. I use it for tuna. Works great. Easy to tie. Once you learn it, it's kind of difficult and kind of, I don't know, it's kind of scary at first, but it works great. I don't fish for trout ever without fluorocarbon line. I'm a firm believer. I've, I've caught fish on fluorocarbon before, and just for the heck of it, tied straight to my braided line, and my bite went way more than in, in half. I mean, I caught way less fish, so I think most everybody knows that. Um, this is a 30 pound fluorocarbon. This is a uh, improved trilene knot that I've got on there. Most of the time I tie a polymer, but uh, I, think, I think that's about everything I was wanting to go over. What what uh, what diameter, I mean not what diameter, what uh, poundage do you 30, use on 30, a floor? 30 pound fluorocarbon, 40 pound braided line. Look at that, you and got I'm, a little nick I'm on using that the too. Nomad line. Man, this stuff is awesome. I, I mean, I. I threw for two hours yesterday and I never got a backlash, not one. And this is the best reel I've ever had though. It's like 12 ball bearing Abu Garcia, super lightweight. And I've got it adjusted perfect for my throwing style. But I mean, I don't get any backlashes. Don't get frays in the line, it's super smooth. It's not, you know, it don't kick up or anything. It's not stiff. Uh, I've seen a lot of people kind of talking down about the Nomad line on online, but I love it. So, so let me ask you this. Do you it. have a certain um, rod that you like for trout? Well, like yeah. specs wise, yeah, fish sticks, but, right? Fish sticks, yeah, but what about the specs? Do you have a specific spec? Hey, well, you know me, I'm kind of uh, I fish with nothing but stiff rods, and that's just my that's a character flaw with me. I can't throw a, a soft spined rod at all, so I, I like a, a really stiff seven foot for, for speckled trout. Medium, I really I can't even do medium heavy, it's almost got to be heavy for me. Really, I can, I can chunk it a mile though, you know, so it's just my throwing style, it's the way I am. I like a stout rod. I'm, I'm a bass fisherman, you know, it's how I was raised and that's what I throw. So, so you're yeah, more comfortable yeah, with sticks rods, man. I want to put that in there. The, you know, Hunter is awesome. He builds a great rod and uh, they're the one of the most sensitive and one of the lightweight. I mean, this thing, this whole setup, I don't think, 
don't know, the, the reel is 4.2 ounces, and I bet the rod's probably four ounces too, so it's an eight ounce setup. It's, it's amazing on the, as far as arm fatigue goes when you're yeah. trying to cast long distance like we do when we're in the surf. But, uh, and the fishing with a spoon requires a lot of casting. Lots of so, casting, I mean, lots of long casting. You yeah. know, so. I mean, I mean, you get a lot of casting with any lure, but especially yeah. when you're trying to yeah. get that and, and, and extra the, distance. You know, I've talked about all the good stuff about Castmaster. The one bad thing about it is, you know, it's the hooks and stuff, but you lose a lot of fish with them too. Uh, when you're when you're pulling them on the rocks, the uh, trout have that super soft mouth, and man, uh, the weight of this lure when you're reeling it in, it and especially it's a long throw, so you're fighting it forever before you can get to the rocks, and it does tear a pretty good hole in their mouth. And when you try to flip it up. I lose some pretty good trout in the rocks, you know, yeah. so we really need to get us a long handled net. We need to start taking one of them with us and that would probably solve that problem. But, but uh, I'll use it if you bring it. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm the one we yeah, netting your yeah, fish. So, you so cast so much. Like I said, everybody's been asking about Castmaster, so we thought we'd do a little Castmaster video. Yeah. Love them, man. Yeah, they, that's, uh, yeah, I mean, look, look at my reel. I mean, if this don't tell you I've been catching trout, I mean, look, look at it. It's got. You probably wiped a got, lot off right it's here. Got, yeah, yeah. I've been rubbing on it. It's got snowflakes all over it, man. It's just scales everywhere you look on it. Yeah, but that's going to do it. You know, I appreciate Cody taking time out. Busy day of work today. You know, we've been all over the place this we've morning. We've been all over the place. Yeah, we've we been, been all, all through, over the place. We, we might work. do, uh, you know, how to throw a cast net video. Yeah, we might, we might throw yeah, something else in here today. We have a lot of out right now, so maybe we'll do that in a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget, follow Captain Cody Dunn. We're at beautiful Sea Star Base Galveston. Check it out, Sea Star Base Online, a nonprofit organization. If you want to fish with this man, hit him up. All his information will be below. Guided trips out of Sea Star Base. I know they do sailing. They do a lot of stuff with the kids here as well. And also, we're selling saltwater sole in our store now, and we're going to be selling fishing license. So, Academy, Walmart, and only Sea Star Base Galveston sells fishing license. Also, so so if, you're come, if you're coming in from the island, you exit 71st Street, B1, I think it's B, 1B. Yeah, 1B. Either, either exit and, makes it here, though. And you'll, you'll be right here. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, But thanks thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, follow, share. Captain Cody, and share. Yeah. Thanks, thanks guys.